welcome. Today let's talk about prime numbers. In particular let's ask how many of them are there. Now most people say, say that when if I start to list the primes it looks like they go on forever and since there are infinitely many numbers the list of primes probably goes on infinitely far as well. Um, that's an intuitive thought and maybe that's absolutely correct uh, but it does warrant some proof, some deep thinking here. Now the first person to really sort of clinch the idea that the primes do in fact go on forever, I've just given the answer away, um, was Euclid, 300 years uh, BC, which is astounding. That's 2,300 years ago someone thought there was a need to examine this question and to really offer proof to it. Um, I'm going to go a little bit further with this question, not only ask how many primes there are, which I've started listing here on the screen, but ask how many twin primes there are as well. And what do I mean by twin prime? That means two consecutive odd numbers, that's the closest they can be except for two and a three, that are both primes. So three and five is a pair of twin primes. Five, seven, 11, 13, 17, 19, let's see, 41, 43, 59, 61. Did the list of those go on forever? And in fact, if you play around with it for a while, you'll find they get harder and harder to, uh, to write out and find. So you might start to question it. And then people, not many people sort of go one step further. If they're, if they're twins of primes, what about triplets? Three consecutive odd numbers, each of which is prime. For example, 357 is actually a triple of primes. And I don't think there's another one on this list. Uh, okay, if I went further, maybe I'll find another one. But the question is, do the list of triples of primes also go on forever? Now, we're in new territory. Don't know. All right, so let's find out. Where should we begin? Should we begin with the triples or begin with the singles? Let's see. Let's, let's, let's go with Euclid. Let's quickly go through Euclid's proof that the list of primes, the single primes themselves, actually does go on forever. And his proof was very clever, very ingenious. Uh, he noticed that every number either is prime or is composite, or as they say in America, composite. Um, if you've got a number like 60, um, it's not prime because it breaks into factors. It's actually 10 times 6. And each of those factors is not primes. In fact, 10 is 2 times 5 and 6 is 2 times 3. But eventually, if you do this process, he noticed that every number does break into primes. 2, 5, 2, and 3 in this case. Um, so a number that's not prime won't break. A number that does break into factors is, not, is, is going to break into prime factors eventually. What am I saying? So use this idea to construct new primes. For example, suppose I thought the numbers on the screen right now are all the primes there were. He said, OK, great. Then multiply them all together, 2 times 3 times 5 times 7 times 11 times da 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 I'm not getting very bored, times 61 times 67. That's some huge monstrous number. But then add 1 to it. So let n be the product of all the primes I think there are. Currently, I think there's only the ones up to 67. And then multiply them together and add 1. Well, this number, it's certainly not even. In fact, it's 2 times something plus 1. It leaves a remainder of 1 when divided by 2. So if I was to break this number into primes, 2 will not be one of the factors. For example, 2 is a factor of 60 because 2 is even. Um, nor will it be a multiple of 3 because it's, this number is actually 3 times a whole bunch of stuff plus 1. So upon division by 3, it leaves a remainder of 1. So if I was to break this huge number n into primes, it will not have 3 as a prime. 60 was divisible by 3, had 3 as one of its factors. This number, when broken to primes, will not have 3 as one of its primes. Nor will it have a number 5, because this number is 1 more than a multiple of 5. It's not divisible by 5. Nor is it divisible by 11. In fact, this number n is 1 more than a multiple of 11. In fact, n is also 1 more than a multiple of 61, and 1 more than a multiple of 67, and 1 more than a multiple of 37. In fact, it's 1 more than every prime, multiple, one, a multiple of, sorry, 1 more than any multiple of every prime I've got so far. So this number n, whatever it is, does have, has none of the factors, has the prime factors, I think, so far. So either n is prime itself, in which case, voila, I've discovered a brand new prime, way bigger than any prime currently on my list. Or if it's not prime, it'll break into primes, which can't be any of the primes I currently have so far. So I'll create new primes from this. That's it. From any finite list of primes, Euclid's now given me a means to construct another set of primes to add to my list. That gives me a new list. To that list, Multiply them all together, add one. And from that, I can construct new primes to add to my list. Voila, a new list. Take all those primes in that brand new list, multiply them together and add one, and I can construct even more primes to add to my list. Therefore, the list of primes goes on forever. All right, so the single primes are indeed infinite in number. Now, I need to point something out here. This method does not say that he's going to generate the primes in order. For example, let me take the first few primes on my list, 2, 3, and 5. According to Euclid, 2 times 3 times 5, I believe that is 30. Add 1, 
gives the number 31, which happens to be prime, but it's not the next number in my list. So you could never guarantee you'll get the primes in order via his method. In fact, he wasn't even shooting for that, so it's not a problem for him. Here's the thing that most people actually don't realize either. If you play this game, 2 plus 1, n equals 2 times 3 plus 1, n equals 2 times 3 times 5 plus 1, it looks like all the numbers you do create this way are themselves directly prime. It's also not true. In fact, if you did the first to 3 times 5 times 7 times 11 times 13, that plus 1 is actually still prime. But the first one, if you went all up to 17, in this case, whoops, sorry, my language is not very good here, I'm being a little sloppy. This, this one turns out to be not prime. In fact, if you'd like, you can actually write it out and see if you can find the prime factors of it. But there, you'll actually see brand new primes, different from the primes from 2 to 17. All right, infinitely many tri uh, single primes. Let's go on to the next easiest case, which is the triple of primes. How many triples of primes are there? And if you're bored with my video thus far, you may be doodling on the side trying to find the next triple of primes. And I say to you, good luck, because the list is finite. And in fact, it's so finite, there's only one example of triple of primes. This one. Where's my pen gone? Sorry. 357 is the only example of a triple of primes. And let's see if I can quickly prove that's why that's the case. So any triple of primes, three consecutive numbers, none of which are prime. So it means I'll have one number, let's call it A, that's prime. The next odd number, so it must be two places long, would also be prime. And the next odd number, which would be another two places long, four places from the original, would also be prime. So I'm seeking a set of numbers, A, A plus 2, A plus 4, all of which are prime. All right, there's one example, 3, 5, and 7. Now, let's look at these numbers. There are three possibilities for the number A. If I divide it by 3, I'm going to get a remainder of 0, a remainder of 1, or a remainder of 2. So there's only three possibilities upon division by 3. Now, if I let's look at each case in turn. If A leaves a remainder of 0 upon division by 3, I'm in trouble. It's not prime, as 3 is a factor, unless, unless A was the number 3 itself. In which case, the case A being 0 can only occur with the example I already know about. Done. Okay, fine. But thereafter, if A leaves a remainder of 0 upon division by 3, it's not prime. So that's the only possibility in this case. All right, let's look at division by remainder of 1. If A leaves a remainder of 1 upon division by 3, then A plus 2 would leave a remainder of 1 plus 2, leaves a remainder of 3 upon division by 3. Thus, this guy is divisible by 3. It won't be 3 itself. In fact, it's going to be bigger than 3. Therefore, this guy is not prime. So, failed. I can't be in the case of A leaving a remainder of 1 upon division by 3. Let's look at the case of leaving A leaves a remainder of 2 upon division by 3, in which case, look at this guy. If A leaves a remainder of 2, then A plus 4 leaves a remainder of 6 upon division by 3, which is a multiple of 3. So this guy would be divisible by 3 in this third case, and can't be prime. So actually, if A leaves a remainder of 1, I'm not going to have a triple of primes. If A leaves a remainder of 2, I'm not going to have a triple of primes. The only way to have a triple of primes is to have, have A leave a remainder of 0 and B the number 3 itself. So that's it. The list of the triple of primes is finite. That's the only one example there is. All right. So singles, infinite. So these primes, infinite in number. Triples of primes, finite. Infinite here, finite here. Then there's something in between the two the twin primes. Are they infinite number or finite number? Well, certainly there seem to be a few of them. Uh, da -da, 3, 5, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, 19, I think I skipped 29, 31, silly me, 41, 43, and so on. Well, this is a good question. How many of these trip twin primes are there? Well, I'll tell you one thing. No one on this planet currently knows, or if they do know, they're not telling. No one knows whether the list of twin primes goes on forever or whether it eventually stops. People keep finding examples of larger and larger twin primes, but no one currently knows if that list is ever going to dry up or not. So there we have it. We're on the forefront of current research mathematics. If you'd like to have a little optional homework assignment after watching this video, prove there are infinitely many twin primes or prove that the list of twin primes eventually stops. And if you do that, you'll be world famous, at least amongst the mathematicians. All right. Thanks very much.